tell me that one of the signs of old age is when you remember things that happened years and years and years ago, but you can't remember what happened yesterday. I can remember when my kids were very, very small. I, I accepted a church in Thomasville, Pennsylvania. The reason I did that was that I, my dad had a heart attack and I was looking for a church where I could move to where I'd be close to home to be able to help mom and dad out at the, where they lived in Valencia, Pennsylvania. And it was very interesting to me uh, uh, that this church opened up. Uh, they had a, uh, a minister before that was quite liberal in his thinking, and I was quite conservative. But we got along well, and the church grew. In fact, uh, by my last memory, I, I had the largest attendance in that church in, during my ministry than uh, they've had for a long time. And since that time, I don't know what it is now. Then when the church, I moved there, the church bought a home that we could live in. I think the Steve will remember it was a pink house. Right on the corner of uh, one street, I can't remember the street that was going down away from town and Kerr Avenue, which was going this way. And down in the next block, there was a black church. And the black minister and I had a very, very good relationship. And for some reason, this particular relationship, some of the conversations that I had with this gentleman, uh, came back to me. I was very active during that particular time in the uh, community affairs where I uh, actually was becoming a community leader while I was there. I led several, several spiritual programs for the entire community, which turned out to be very successful. I, I worked with the city uh, council to be able to uh, deal with uh, issues that they were facing, and uh, I was very close to the radio, and I had times where I spoke on the radio. But I was very active, and this one time, this black minister and I were working on a committee together. Don't ask me what the committee was doing. I don't have to remember. Uh, the vaguely runs in my mind that there was a racial issue came up and uh, uh, the ministers in town wanted to be able to resolve that issue so they asked him, uh, him and me to work together. I, I told Mike a little while ago that he would introduce me to some of his parishioners or friends and he said, this is my brother, Phil Faust. And every time he did that, I saw the eyebrows raised and looked at his blackness and my whiteness. And then he said, now, I don't mean the blood that we had the same parents, that we do have the same father. And uh, he said, well, one, well, he's my brother in Christ. And uh, I felt the same way about him. Good man, good man. I can tell you some of the things that happened while with, well, between he and I during that particular time, but it, it'd be immaterial. But as we were working on this committee, he was walking by the house one time, and I was out trimming the hedges around the house. And we stopped to talk. And if you know me, if I'm doing something I don't like to do, I'll stop and talk, and I'll talk, and I'll talk, and I'll talk. And he and I were talking about this committee that he and I were working on. There was no other person on the committee, but just he and I. And so we talked about the racial situation in Titusville. And one thing he said stands out in my mind. I can't remember how the whole conversation went. But one thing stands out in my mind, and he looked at me and says, Brother Phil, I'm not sure I'm quoting him exactly, but this is the way I went. He said, I am not so much concerned about the separation between whites and blacks as I am about the separation of the sheep from the goats. And that led into a discussion of self-examination. 
that a lot of people that felt that they weren't prejudiced needed to study their own lives to make sure that they weren't doing anything offensive to a brother or sister in Christ. And I thoroughly agree that that's one of the keys to having a good racial relationship with those of other ethnic groups. Of course, the way I believe, I think we're uh, all one race, and that is the human race. And until somebody does something wrong, I, I think just consider them a friend. But this idea of self-examination is very prominent in the scriptures. Something that we need to consider as we're thinking about the future, how this country is going, how, how we need to be prepared for what's going to happen that may not be according to what the Bible would want us to be or what God wants us to be. We need to be prepared for the time that we will pass from this life to the next. And we need to be prepared for the time that Jesus Christ comes back again. And I think that one of the most important things that we need to do is to examine ourselves. I, I can think of many, many scriptures that deal with self-examination. In our communion service, let a man examine himself and let him judge his own self. And it goes on, I have a list of scriptures there uh, for you to read. It's with, uh, Galatians 4, 4, for example, that let every man prove his own work, and then shall ye have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Let every man prove his own work. I, I can answer for my own life. Steve can answer for his own life, and you can answer for your own life. And I, I believe that this self-examination is one of the most personal things that we can do. And I'm going to make a comment, and I want to try to make it self-clear. I cannot examine you and what you're doing and how you live and how you think. Because in my opinion, in my structure of thought, that is between <coughs> you and God and no one else. I, I don't try to examine what a person does or thinks, and I try to accept them for what they do. That your self-examination should be done not to be able to please me or anybody else, but to please God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You need to look into your own heart, examine your own self, your own motives, your own purpose, and realize that this is between you and God. And another thing you need to do, you need to be totally honest and objective during this time of self-examination. And I would like this morning to give you three basic thoughts in relationship to this idea of self-examination. Examine your priorities. What are your priorities as far as life is concerned? I, I remember sitting in the office of, uh, of a gentleman that was my co-worker when I worked in the CPE firm. Uh, this man, I'll call him by his first name, Richard, and I got talking one time during one of the breaks that we took about our motivation in life. And in this conversation, he made this statement. He says, my only motivation with what, what I am doing is to be able to make such a large amount of money so that my kids don't have to worry about working. I said, Richard, what about your relationship with God? And he says, I don't have one. He says, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore. We need to examine ourselves objectively, honestly, 
What is your relationship to God? Where does God fit in your life? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus makes a statement in this sermon. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first God's kingdom, God's righteousness. In my opinion, that ought to be the number one priority of your life. I've seen many problems come up because of that. I had a woman in Titusville, which I spoke before, that her husband didn't want her to come to church. And I went to talk to her one time, and I didn't know it, but uh, at the time, I mean, she told me this later on, that my her husband was sitting at the window upstairs, looking out the window, the window was open, and he had a rifle in his hand. If he, if I did anything that he didn't like, he was going to shoot me. I had tried to talk to him several, several times. At one time, he literally took me and led me to my car and opened the door and says, "Get in and get out." What is your priority? I'm not sure you're not, not that bad. But I never could reach him as far as the gospel of Jesus Christ was concerned. It bothered me. Paul said for me to live as Christ, but to die as gain. For me to live as Christ. And brother, brothers and sisters in Christ, as I think of my own life, I would like for you to see Christ in me. Because that's who I love most. Oh, I love my kids. I love my wife. I love you. And Christ, Jesus Christ and God are the number one in my life. And we need to realize that. Once we establish our priorities, if God is first, and he ought to be, the second thing we need to do is set some goals. What goals do we set for ourselves? What goals are we going to set for the congregation, for the church? I, I, I know what I would like. But I would rather see a church dedicated, with people dedicated to the Lord wholly and wholeheartedly than see thousands of people here. I would rather work with a Saul congregation and bring them to a total commitment and dedication to God than I would for a church that just comes because that's the thing to do. And I'm afraid that when I look at and listen to some of the things that are being said out in our uh, town today, and as I begin to uh, see the, uh, listen to the television programs that um, uh, as I scan through the television set, that a lot of people are just going to church for the entertainment thereof and not for the uh, sound doctrine that is being preached. I remember when I was in Tonsville, I went to a ministerial so, uh, meeting down in around Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Well, I was hoping when I went that I would have a tour of the factory, the Hershey chocolate family, but they didn't take me on that. And by the meeting that was held was done done by liberal preachers and some of the things that were said and taught in that particular seminar was outrageous. One man even stood up and questioned whether Jesus Christ was a real person or not. Or the imagination of some people that fictitiously drew him up. Remember a friend of mine was sitting beside me and he ran a hold of my arm several times and said, Phil, keep quiet. Phil, keep quiet. Because he knew what was going through my mind. But the goals, the goals. 
Paul, Peter wrote in the, his second epistle and concluded that epistle by saying, grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. And by the way, I want to say this. I don't care where, how far you are on the spectrum of, of Christian living and Christian life. I don't know where you stand. That where you stand, there's still room for improvement. Every one of us, I don't care who we are. Some of the best preachers I know have room for improvement. And we need to realize that none of us are perfect, but we need to keep striving for perfection. We need to do that. The very first chapter of that particular epistle that Paul wrote, the second epistle that Paul wrote, Peter. He says, uh, told us to grow, add to our faith, knowledge, our, our knowledge, virtue, and so forth. He says, if these things be in you, you will not be condemned. Read that passage of scripture if you will. The third thing, and I think this is important, we need to know our Bible. We need to know our Bible. And we need to realize that what we think and what we believe is nonsense if it does not agree with God's Word. It, it is amazing to me that many people say they are Christian. But when they speak up and talk about what they believe, it is not according to what the Bible says. Oh, I've talked to many people down through the years. Many people that were in church leadership. And they said, oh, they don't believe some of the things that the church stands for. In fact, I can take you not too far from here. And there were, there were two churches called the Christian Church right across the road, Route 60 from each other. And the church split when it was one church. And what they split about and how foolish it's been. They were wanting the coal bin put inside the church because they were burning coal for heat during the winter time. And one group wanted the coal bin on the back end of the church where it would not be seen from the road. And the other one on the side would be closer to the windows, shovel it in. And the argument got so hard that they went, one group went across the road and built their church with a coal bin in the back. I know of a church where the chairman of the church board, the elders, Got up one night during the discussion they were having and took a pistol out, on the, out of his pocket and laid it on the table. He said, now I want you to know it's going to be my way or else. And one of the other elders got in a discussion with him, became pretty heated. And this man who pulled the gun out and laid it on the table, hauled off and hit him three times in the face because of the disagreement. And what was the disagreement about? whether they were going to pay the, uh, the parking lot with concrete, cement, or if they were going to use it with asphalt. That was a total disagreement. We need to know our Bible. What the Bible says about our relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to know our Bible, what the Bible says about our relationship to God and the doctrines, why we follow them and what we do. We need to know our Bible and to make sure that what we believe and what we think is in agreement. And if we think about an opinion, make sure it does not replace one of the doctrines that God made clear in His Word. We need to know that. I have a list of things that uh, there are rules or Bible study that in, in the bulletin today, not my message today. And one of the most important, we need to allow our scriptures 
to explain Scripture. We need to have a study of various translations. And most of all, if you have the time, you need to get involved with the original language. So you can see the inflections that are there in the Greek and the Hebrew. And what it means to be in the native case of the uh, uh, Eris case. You need to get involved with knowing exactly what the Bible says. And believe it, I don't know how many opinions I have thrown out that I believed at one time. And because the more I study the Word of God, the more I find I've had wrong opinions. Remember, set your priorities. God first. Set goals which are realistic, attainable. <coughs> Once you attain them, set more attainable goals. You need to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Next week, we're going to get involved with some of the areas of discussion. Get involved with some of the doctrines of the Bible and what the Bible says about it. And what we need to believe in concern with that. But at this particular time, if there's any here that needs to make a decision for Christ, we invite you to come as we stand, as we sing, just as I am. <laughs>